Hey guys, this Jeep Gladiator was just dropped off. We've got just over a week with it. We're going to show you guys what it's like to live with it. Uh, some of the details, on-road, off-road, and hopefully a road trip. It's a Gladiator Overland trim, so if you aren't familiar, it's the, uh, the kind of the pickup truck version of the Wrangler. It's raining. Let's head out. We're going to go to Costco. i got to run some errands, pick up some groceries. Using a Gladiator, let's see how practical this thing is. Again, we're still in, in town. We're not taking it off-roading quite yet. So we're going to do this is a more living with it in the city of Ann Arbor, Michigan. I had to pick a bunch of groceries. Some um, just bought a new condo, so I got some new stuff for that. And then I actually bought two floor lamps. So that's the practicality with, with the pickup bed in the back. So that's the first day with the Gladiator. Didn't drive it a ton, just to work, and then uh, drove it afterwards to get some groceries, obviously. I'm liking it so far. Uh, it's pretty cool. Looking forward to getting an off-road, experiencing a little bit more on the road. Haven't even got on a freeway with it yet, but initial impressions have been good. Good morning, guys. It's Wednesday morning now, so we've had a couple days with the truck. It's been uh, pretty good so far. Let's do a little walk around. This color is called Billet Silver. Uh, this is an Overland model, so you get the color-matched front grille and the the fenders. It's on a little bit more friendly tires than the Rubicon I drove a couple weeks ago. So on the road it's actually a little bit better. Jeep Gladiator. It's uh it only comes in four door configuration only. So it's actually it's actually a usable rear seat. I got my backpack and lunchbox back there, but you could actually fit back here. So here is the window sticker. You can see the as option price is fifty three thousand dollars, which is not cheap. As an Overland, the base price is forty thousand. I believe a base Sport is somewhere in the thirty-three thousand range starting price. Has the three point six V six that makes uh, two hundred eighty-five horsepower. Let's see. It's got the. I have the eight speed. So this you can get. You can actually get. You can get a Gladiator with a six speed manual transmission. This one has the upgrade eight speed. Um, but it's got. Let's see. Trailer tow package. It's cold weather, so I've got heated front seats, heated steering wheel. It's got LED lighting, so it's the upgraded front uh, headlights, taillights, daytime running lights, which looks really good. I think that's very, very important. It makes it look much more premium and modern. 8.4, so this Uconnect screen, 8.4 upgraded. What else? Adaptive cruise of uh, forward collision, right here, adaptive cruise control, which uh, it's nice to have adaptive cruise control, but like it has adaptive cruise control and doesn't have power seats. It's got manual adjust seats. Oh, it is windy. We have arrived in the Holly at the off-road park with Mr. Matt. We are uh, gonna take his demon off-roading. He's got the. Never mind. That's not gonna work. I warned you. It's it'll clear. Oh. It's just gonna be oh, a monster geez. drop. <laughs> Wait. Let me see the camera. Right. So. Yeah, that, that's a bit of a drop. All right. Can we? We can do it. Yeah, we. Yeah. This? Absolutely. We had a trailblazer going through it today. It was great. Old trailblazer. Holy crap. Yep. So it's gonna drop in. <laughs> yep. You're good. <laughs> And then just keep, just let the vehicle, so keep going. Yep. And now let it slowly roll down and just okay. let the vehicle roll and just keep pressure on the brakes. Okay. If you look on the left side right here, yeah. follow that tire tread up. Oh, with my left tire? Yep. Okay. Ah. Yep. <laughs> this is narrower than I expected. Holy crap. Whoopsies. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so you go. That, holy crap. Hopefully yeah, I dug a hole. Yeah. So just more momentum? Yep. But I'll be able to do it. Just yep. more momentum. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. All right. I'm like, I'm used to like counter steering. I'm like, you're thinking of it as a race car. Yeah. So when you go, let's so like your steering angle that last time. Yeah. Was here. Oh, that's why. All it's doing is just digging it. down. That's why. Okay. So, that was fun. A little bit of rock. 
Right. So nothing mechanical is designed to be damaged on this thing. No, I mean, with this course, the yeah. design of it, it is a stock vehicle course. Okay. Just to kind of show you what a vehicle like this can go through. Yeah. There's tons of clearance. This has got a little bit longer wheelbase than most. Yeah. You know. Hello. It's very beneficial. That, yeah, that that's called a notch, right? Yep. We've shown it on video a couple times when we were here last time. That looks terrifying. You need something like uh, Sean's Ultra 4 to make it up, right? So there'll be some guys here actually later. Oh my. Time. But that it's amazing watching those guys. Go they'll there. be here today? Oh uh, yeah. That, yeah, that would, we could have been making up that first income. That's crazy. So go up, go up the main hill? Yep. Okay. It's hard to tell how steep this is on camera, but it's it's quite steep. Are we gonna make it, Matt? All right, all right, let's go. Okay, nice and easy. Nice and easy. Yep, no. Just let it, whoa! <laughs> and light pressure on the brakes. Yeah. Tires are rolling. Yeah. Oh boy. Holy crap, this is like a 45 degree incline, maybe more. It's what? Okay. It's not even that much. Not even that much? No, it just. The feeling. That's <laughs> okay, real bumpy right here. So slow down. Okay. Yeah. I feel like we're like exploring a like jungle or something. <laughs> so you just go over a bunch of times to carve out the track. Yep. We're we going the right yep, way. Follow it around. Ah. <laughs> All right, be paint. I want you to let me know if you ever see somebody bring their Range Rover autobiography onto this trail. Let me see. Here, any boy. <laughs> Because one of my friends bought a Range Rover autobiography and he goes, I want to get a Wrangler Rubicon. I'm like, but you just bought one of the most capable off-road vehicles out there. And he goes, yeah, but my paint was $8,000. I'm like, okay. Well. <laughs> it's been having a ton of fun driving this thing around. Uh, just filmed a little intro for the review itself. Going to move the truck down, film some uh, more B-roll shots of it. We're going to get driving around, stick some GoPros on it. This has been pretty awesome. I'm actually like super impressed with the... Uh, what this thing can do. No, it's not a Rubicon model, but it's been doing a lot. I'm learning more about off-roading, and I don't have much experience, but you guys probably know I've been more of the road car type of stuff, some track stuff. Um, off-roading is completely new, so Matt's teaching me some things, gotten to kind of see what, was, what I was doing wrong climbing up that hill. This has been a, a lot of fun. You know, the Gladiator is a pretty big vehicle until you park it next to something like this. Holy crap. This is what they use here at the park to uh, make trails and kind of groomed them and everything. The Gladiator looks like a little toy next to it. I think it's huge. Matt says, I mean, you can see the, tra the tracks from where it's going everywhere. It's helping make all the trails and everything. But yeah, it says Big Daddy on it. Definitely compared to the Gladiator. Really like, look at the uh, LED lights I was telling you guys about earlier. LED light package, front and rear. What if this has LEDs? Probably not. LEDs up front, got the daytime running lights that are on the fenders, which are body colored now. Upgraded lights. It's good looking. I think in a different color, it'd be even better. I'm not a huge fan of silver. This is called billet silver. We definitely have to take the doors off. And then as, yeah, we've been off-roading all day with a bunch of Pelican cases, film equipment. I've got my tripod in there. There's a drone in here. Yeah, practical. It's a little bit dusty. Have to get washed off. This has been so much fun. We're about to take the Gladiator on a weekend road trip out to Chicago, loading some of our backpacks up. It'll be exciting to see how this does on a long road trip on the freeway at freeway speeds, how the ride is, how the wind noise is. That's what we're really excited to do. I'll stick a GoPro on to do like a cool little time lapse. So, so far, I really, really like this. I'll kind of expand a little bit more. Didn't film much the last two days. I just was uh, driving around using it, but. It's been great. We are back home from Chicago. The Gladiator was frankly really great on this trip. You see, uh, it killed a lot of bugs. Today is the last day with the truck, so clean it off. I do want to show you guys taking the roof off. I'm gonna try to take the doors off. I've never taken the doors off of a Jeep before. This thing, I greatly enjoyed on a road trip. Um, to be 100% honest, I kind of want one now. All right, verdict on the road trip. This was kind of my final test on deciding my opinion on the Gladiator and what it was like to live with. And happy to say, 
it was really good uh, exceeded expectations so the wheelbase is almost 19 inches longer than a Wrangler so it's a lot more stable on the freeway it actually wasn't horrible I was trying to see given that it is decently off-road capable how good has it behaved on the road I've been driving around normal um, city driving and a shorter trips on a freeway up to about an hour but four hours in the car driving all the way to Chicago we'll see how it felt fuel economy wise it was actually decent so uh 511 miles average 21.7 overall that's including all the way on the freeway and then a little bit of a uh, in-city driving in downtown chicago i saw i think it got as high as 24 mpg on just a freeway trip starting pretty much as soon as i got on the freeway all the way into chicago it's rated at 22 on the highway now the other big thing is wind noise. We have the hard top on this one with actually the interior padding too, um, the headliner. So wind noise is, is it's there. It's present wind noise, tire noise. It's not as bad as if you had like a Rubicon with those more hardcore off-road tires. And again, this is a bigger vehicle that's not the most aerodynamic. It's kind of shaped like a brick. Um, but it wasn't intolerable in any way. We have adaptive cruise control. Uh, so I just had adaptive cruise control going on the freeway. That was pretty good. It's spacious. Um, I was using Android Auto, which was pretty much my first time using it extensively, and it was it was pretty good. If you have Apple CarPlay, it does it also. It's got a good sound system, upgraded Alpine. I also love, I mean, heated steering wheel, heated seats, and it's got quick buttons for everything. You don't need to go through a bunch of menus to get to every single thing you possibly want to do. Uh, let's see what else. The auto stop starts a little bit irritating. Sometimes you can turn it off easily right there. You connect. I'm impressed. This is the 8.4 inch you connect upgrade. Um, I'm. I think that's really, really good. Actually, I like it a lot. What else we talk about road trip wise? Um, there is a little bit of a downside, and it's the fact that the the bed in the back doesn't. It locks. This will lock, but this cover here, you could open up and you could just get into the stuff there. So we have everything in the back seat i believe they sell lockable covers unless i haven't figured out how to lock this one they've got this nice little case for the roof panels the top to go in there there's a little instruction slash toolkit for taking the doors off with these tools but this pamphlet here literally shows a regular wrangler it does not show the gladiator so got a little youtube video going to try to figure out how to pull these off with the harness and it should be pretty simple No doors and roof is wrecking havoc on Helen's hair. Hey. <laughs> this is really cool. It's a completely different kind of experience. It's a nice day out. If it starts raining though, I think we just go run to the parking structure or something. This is uh this is fun. You can't do this if you're Ford Explorer. This screen has some really nice graphics. Actually, let me uh just turn the truck on. Watch this a little kind of the gla graphics and the little Jeep runs across the bottom right there. That's 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 a really nice little touch. If we hop out, there's no door to open anymore. Right on back as I showed earlier, you lift these up. It's got the, the bolt storage down here um, for taking off. It's got actually counts for how many you need to go where. I'm gonna end up putting the front doors back in. It's got the storage here. I'm not quite sure if there's it's lockable for underneath the seats because it seems like you can just open it. You can lock this here, but behind here, there really isn't that much space. You could put something valuable back here, but there's not a ton of space. This one is equipped with the Bluetooth speaker, which plugs in and so it's constantly charged. It's behind this seat on this side. I'll pull the strap here. See this Bluetooth speaker that comes out? Uh, apparently it's like super rugged. It's, it's just a Bluetooth speaker that you can use if you're going picnicking or something or another. Uh, I remember hearing somewhere that it can work after being submerged 30 minutes underwater, which is not a test that I typically do with my speakers, but I've done almost everything I could spending the last week with this truck. We've taken it off-roading, we've taken it regular city driving to work, short freeway trips, grocery trips, running errands. I took it on a road trip all the way to Chicago, a four-hour drive there, four-hour drive back. And honestly, the couple of minor complaints I had are extremely, extremely minor. The seats are, are cloth, they're manual adjustable, but it's, that's okay. You can get an upgraded leather. It could use a little bit more power, um, but the towing capacity is very, very good for its class. I think it's 7,600 pounds, which is plenty good. Um, 
just when you're merging onto the freeway, it doesn't have quite the push as I'm used to with like an RS7 or something. One of these with a Hemi would be awesome. They are coming out with a diesel version of the Gladiator. If you're really into towing, that'll be your go-to. If you really, I mean, Honestly, this thing is awesome. I've had a ton of fun with it. Uh, as a daily driver, I don't need to worry about and cringe about every time I hit a pothole. In cars like the RS7 or something with such a small sidewall and such a large wheel, you're constantly worried about that. With this thing, I'm just kind of plowing right down the road and it's great. It rides pretty comfortably. The steering's a little more on the vague side. I mean, given what it is and what it can do off-road, it's acceptable. Nothing is atrocious in any way. I'm genuinely impressed. I would 100% take this over a Wrangler without a single doubt. I would take a Gladiator and I would do the Overland trim over the Rubicon just because I'm not going as hardcore off-roading. Yeah, you don't get as impressive of a look and some of the little trim pieces and the bigger wheels and tires. That's not a huge deal to me. I have greatly enjoyed my week with the Gladiator. I'm gonna go ahead and put the doors and the roof back on, clean it up a little bit. They're picking up tomorrow. Hope you guys liked this video, showing you guys what it's like to live with it. Make sure you check out the full review where we took it off-roading. Thanks for watching.